how's it going everybody welcome to the channel this is each one reach one i pray and i hope as i always do that i can teach and reach one of you with this lesson lord willing we're back for what i believe is part three of your zeal for god your zeal for yahweh bahashem yahweh shai is it founded on biblical knowledge or is it a construct of your own making as you conjure up your own belief system are you worshiping God and trying to love the Most High Yahweh and Yahweh Shai through your 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 own understanding? As the scriptures say, lean not on your own understanding, right? Or are you just worshiping the Father through your own understanding because you don't believe in Yahweh Shai or our Messiah? Do you not believe in the New Testament because you believe the New Testament is fraudulent? It was made up. You know to oppress us and to enslave us and to lead us away from our power do you believe that if you believe that then you are in error because you don't understand the scripture that means you are trying to love the father without knowledge you have a zeal for the most high but that love and that excitement and that that enthusiasm that you have for him it doesn't please him because it's not according to knowledge. You're not loving him the way he wants to be loved. You're not loving him in truth and sincerity, right? You're not loving him in spirit. You're loving him in your flesh, all right? So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the lesson, all right? So we are not in the book of Judges. We ended in talking about angels. That's where we were, right? Yes concerning angels that's where we're going bear with me one second all right here we go concerning angels yes here we go got my slide up all right so angels are messengers that's what angels mean why did the father create angels why did he use our master yahweh Shai to create angels messengers what's the purpose of messengers well they to do what messengers do right they deliver messages right they're couriers couriers for our power couriers for our father and for his only begotten son they come to men to mankind to his creation and they deliver messages they speak to people on his behalf not only do they speak to people his prophets and, and so forth on his behalf but they also do things on his behalf, right? Like the, the scriptures say in Revelations, how the angels are gathering the prayers of the saints and they bring the prayers of the saints to, to the Father. See, the, me the, the messengers, the angels have many jobs, many tasks that they do on behalf of the Father. There's a, a way in which the Father rules over the entire earth. He doesn't do it by himself. There's a way in which he stays on top of all the comings and goings and the doings and the thoughts of mankind he uses angels you think that he's just listening in to everybody's conversations on his own you think he's just listening to the idle words of everyone on his own that's what you believe is happening because you don't understand god again your zeal for him is not according to knowledge all right he has many workers that he has set up to do things for him. And the chief among them is the Messiah, is who we call Yahweh Shai, who we call, who the world calls Christ, right? That's who is the chief among them. It makes sense that if you have a bunch of workers, there is a, a, a supervisor, there is a foreman, there is a manager, there is someone, a, a lead, right? A lead of all of them, a leader of them all. Well, Yahweh Shai is the lead angel, the angel of the presence of the Most High God, all right? The one who is his splitting image, who shares his mind, who he confides in, who he calls his fellow, his close relation, his right-hand man, so to speak. That's where the term right-hand man comes from. It comes from the understanding of Yahweh Shai's position with our father at his right hand. 
his right hand man okay so let's get to it now we're just going to breeze through all of these different accounts concerning angels not every single one of them but many of them because you know for many you're going to say well this is redundant i don't really need to know this i know that angels are real and angels existed throughout the bible i get it but just bear with me for the sake of this lesson because there may be something here that you learn even though you understand the angel concept there might be something else that clicks for you that didn't click before there might be something that you hear or that you see and read on the screen in the slide presentation that may make something that you were studying click that's the nature of studying the scripture right you never know how or when you know another one of those breadcrumbs is going to be given to you or how or when you're going to get that spiritual update or download right okay so hagar an angel appeals to to hagar hagar in the desert and tells her to return to sarai all right the father didn't come down personally okay speaking of father abraham three angels visit abraham to announce the birth of isaac an angel stops abraham from sacrificing isaac and provides a ram and as you can see on the screen the scriptures where these things are spoken about are listed on on the screen for your reference so you can go in and you can read the scriptures yourself so you don't just have to take my word for it that what i'm reading is what's in the book you have a reference available all right write down the reference pause and write down the reference if you need to all right number three lot angels visit lot to warn him about the destruction of sodom and gomorrah angels lead him out of Sodom and Gomorrah with his family to save him all right the father didn't do it himself he used angels as saviors for Lot and his family Jacob Jacob dreams of a ladder with angels ascending and descending and we know that 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 ladder was symbolic of Yahweh Shai Christ our Messiah so Jacob had a dream of Yahweh Shai, our Messiah, and angels were ascending and descending from the heavens above via him. All right. And so an angel speaks to Jacob in a dream about returning to his homeland. Angels meet Jacob on his way back to Canaan. Right. Moses. The angel of the Lord appears to Moses in the burning bush. It was not the Most High God, our Father, that appeared to angel to angel to, that appeared to Moses in the burning bush. It was the angel of the Lord. Why does it say the angel of the Lord? It doesn't say that every time it's speaking about angels. It says the angel of the Lord because the angel of the Lord, the angel of our Father, is Yahweh Shai. It is His right hand. It is the Messiah. That's who this phrase refers to. Anytime you see angel of the Lord or angel of the presence of the Lord, it is talking about Christ. It is talking about our king, Yahweh Shai. All right. Balaam, an angel blocks Balaam's path and speaks to him through his donkey. Again, an angel did this, not the father. Joshua, an angel identified as the commander of the Lord's army appears to Joshua. Why did an angel who is called the commander of the Lord's army appeared to Joshua. And why is there a commander of the Lord's army? Why isn't the father commanding his own army so that no one else can steal his glory? So that no one else can have any credit for doing anything. Why didn't he just come down himself and lead his own army? Why does he have an army that consists of physical human people? Why doesn't he have a spiritual army that came down to get the work done for him? Why did he use people, a physical, flesh and blood army? Why did he send an angel to command that army on his behalf instead of doing it himself? If you, if what you believe is true, when he says, in my glory, I will not give to another. If it mean what you believe it means, then none of these scriptures make sense. The book of Judges doesn't make sense. The, king, the book of Kings doesn't make sense, right? 
Nothing concerning the angels makes sense. Nothing concerning the prophets makes sense. It's all craziness. It's all fake and fictitious if we're using the Old Testament only Israelites knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. That's why he is proving your script, your understanding to be foolishness. He was showing you to be without the Holy Spirit. To be without sound mind. You have no real understanding of heavenly matters or of this book at all. You don't need to be handling it and you sure don't need to be teaching it. If you are an Old Testament only Israelite, you're going to be in trouble. Your logic doesn't hold up. It doesn't pass the, the test. It can't be tried in fire and be left remaining. All right. Gideon. An angel appears to Gideon to call him to do what? To deliver Israel from the Midianites. So the father sent a messenger. He used a worker to go commission another worker to deliver Israel. He didn't deliver Israel himself. So Gideon got some fame and got some praise and got some props and some credit and some glory for delivering Israel from the Midianites. Why did the father give his allow Gideon to, to steal his glory? Why did he send an angel to steal his, to, that stole his, you know, why did he give away his glory to an angel who would then go and allow Gideon to take his, his glory? That's twofold glory stealing. And the father did it to himself. He wasn't that bright. If you ask an Old Testament only Israelite, you see what you have to be saying about the Most High God to have the understanding and the belief system that you hold on to? It's crazy. It's going to get you in trouble. Because you're being disrespectful, thinking you're honoring the father. You are dishonoring him with your madness. Manoah and his wife, an angel announces the birth of Samson. Elijah, an angel provides food and encouragement to Elijah. David, an angel of the Lord, appears to David to stop the plague on Israel. Right? An angel of the Lord. Right? Right? appears to David to stop the plague on Israel and angel, not the angel of the Lord. Pay attention to wording. The angel Gabriel interprets Daniel's vision. Gabriel explains the prophecy of the 70 weeks. An angel, possibly Gabriel, speaks to Daniel about future events. Zechariah, multiple visions are explained by an angel in Zechariah 1 through 6, chapters 1 through 6. Mary, the angel Gabriel, announces the birth of Yahweh Shai to Mary. Joseph, an angel appears to Joseph in a dream to tell him to take Mary as his wife. An angel tells Joseph in a dream to flee to Egypt. An angel tells Joseph in a dream to return to Israel. Shepherds, angels announce the birth of Yahweh to shepherds. Yahweh angels minister to Yahweh after his temptation. An angel strengthens Yahweh in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter and Cornelius, an angel tells Cornelius to send for Peter. An angel frees Peter from prison. Paul, an angel reassures Paul during a storm at sea. John, multiple visions and messages are delivered by angels throughout the book of Revelation. That's the book being spoken of here. Like I said, we're going to breeze through this because the point is just to highlight the things that angels are doing. So, so that Old Testament only Israelites can see the father at work. That it is the father at work, even though he's using angels to get the job done and if the father is using willing to use messengers and people to work on his behalf why could he not have created a chief messenger and a chief worker among them all christ why is it impossible for that to be the case all right in the book of jasher gives more more detail about things that happen in the bible right goes into greater detail abraham 
angels assist Abraham in the battle against the four kings? Why did the father not come down himself and assist Abraham? Or why didn't he, he didn't just mirac spiritually and miraculously destroy the four kings for Abraham? Why did he have to use angels to assist Abraham in a physical battle on earth? Why, why was that necessary to do it that way? Why did he allow the angels to steal his glory? Did Abraham give credit and praise and honor and glory to the angels that assisted him? Or did he give honor and praise and glory to the heavenly father for assisting him, knowing where the help came from? Angels meet Jacob on his return to Canaan. And you know, it's something I want to touch on really quick because I didn't put it in this lesson. Another erroneous belief among Old Testament only Israelites is that in the New Testament, Christ, Yahweh Shai, is still in the glory of the Father, right? And that he is himself still in his still in the glory of the Father. But yet over and over and over again in, in the New Testament, Yahweh Shai, Christ, is giving credit, honor, and glory to the Father. He's constantly saying stuff like, you know, I come to do the Father's will, right? The my, my the I I I follow the the Father's commandments. I've not come to do my own will, but the will of the Father. Why callest thou me good? There is but one good, and that's the Father that is in heaven. He constantly points everybody to the Father, telling them to worship the Most High God, saying that He is not the Father, right? And to give credit and honor and glory to the Father, He constantly says it. He never tries to take away from the Father's majesty. Never. In fact, he lifts up the father. He preaches about the father, teaches about the father, tries to show us who the father is. That's what he did. That's what his mission was, was to introduce us to the father, help us to get to know the father through him, to help us to build a relationship with the father through him, not to erase the father. But that's what Old Testament only Israelites say. But the new scripture, the New Testament doesn't support their belief. So why do they have this belief? of things that are happening in the New Testament that are not happening in the New Testament. It's because their belief and their understanding is not according to knowledge. The, the prophets and the apostles and the disciples in the New Testament constantly give credit, honor, and glory to the Father. Over and over and over again, the Father is mentioned. He has never written out or taken out or being us uh, usurped at any point by anybody in the New Testament, never anywhere. It doesn't happen, but they say it and they believe it. Why do they say it? Why do they believe it? And the scriptures don't support it. There is nothing in the New Testament that should cause them to believe that the apostles and disciples are trying to do away with our father, with the most high God. They're trying to write him out. They're trying to replace him with this new God. Nowhere in the new scripture does anyone ever say anything that can even lead you to believe that's what they're saying. But yet the New Testament, I mean, the Old Testament only Israelites, they say it. No support in scriptures to point to, but they say it anyway because they have a zeal for the Father that is not according to knowledge. That's why. In the Apocrypha, the book of Tobit, the angel Raphael guides Tobias on his journey and heals Tobit and Sarah. Second Ezra, the angel Uriel explains visions to Ezra. Uriel continues to reveal mysteries to Ezra. Uriel appears again to interpret Ezra's vision. And that's not all. Constantly, continuously, because this only, I only put a few up here just for the sake of brevity. All right. But all throughout the book of Ezra, he's having conversations with angels who are teaching him things and revealing things to him. Right? Why, again, why did the father not come down himself to deal with Ezra himself? Judith, angels provide divine support and messages throughout the narrative. All right. Concerning Father Jacob, let's go into Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 to begin. And Jacob was left alone 
and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob, he knew his name. He didn't really need him to tell him his name, but there is a reason why he, he's doing this. If this is for our sakes, for us who would come later and read the scriptures, for us to learn something. He said, Jacob, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. You see, he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Right? Because he's now passing over from being a carnal man into being a spiritual man with God. All right? From a carnal man to a spiritual man. And that's our walk. We're supposed to go from the carnal man to a spiritual man. If you are an Old Testament only Israelite, you have never crossed over to being a spiritual man. You are a carnal man still. So you can only understand carnal things and not spiritual things. You have no spiritual discernment of the truth because you are without the spirit, the Holy Spirit, which leads you into all truth. You're lacking it. Again, there will be some repetition in here, okay? Going into this next section. Destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Angels visit Lot. And they warn him of the impending destruction and help him and his family escape the city before it is destroyed by divine judgment. So I'm just giving a little bit more information on something that I spoke about before, you know, and, and talking about it in just slightly a different way, because sometimes people need to be taught in this manner. All right. Number two, angelic commander of Joshua. The commander of the Lord's army appears to Joshua before the battle of Jericho, symbolizing divine support. In the conquests of Canaan. Again, I know that I touched on this already. Again, I'm doing it for the sake of the people who learn this way. I know there are different learning styles for people out there, and some people need repetition, and some people need rewording of things, or to be provided a little more detail about a, a matter in order for something to click. Gideon's victory. An angel calls Gideon to deliver Israel from the Midianites and provides instruction for the battle. The Lord causes confusion among the Midianite camp, leading to their defeat. How did he do it? Via his angels, via his messengers, not himself. The Lord causes confusion among the Midianite camp. Why did he do that instead of just allowing, you know, by showing his might, by just making them all drop dead? Why didn't he do that? Well, because he did it for the sake of Gideon and those with him to strengthen them in their faith, in their belief of our power. To show them that I am with you. He wanted them to know and to see and for, for them to give him his glory, his praise and his honor for being with them and for helping them. And they knew to give credit to the highest and not to angels. They knew who was responsible. So the father's glory was not stolen, was not taken by the angels, even though the angels did it. The father still got his glory. We worship Yahweh Shai Christ, but we still give glory to the father because we know that Yahweh Shai and everything that he did, him dying for us and everything that he did for us, purchasing everlasting life for us, that was by commandment of the Father. So we still give the Father love, praise, honor, and glory. We don't take it from him just because of what Yahweh Shai did. In fact, we give it to the Father because of what Yahweh Shai did. All right? Destruction of the Assyrian army. An angel of the Lord strikes down 185,000 Assyrian soldiers saving Jerusalem during King Hezekiah's reign. Again, an angel of the Lord strikes down 185,000 Assyrian soldiers, not the father himself. The same event is recounted 
in Isaiah 37 and 36, emphasizing the angel's role in the miraculous victory. Again, study to show thyself approved. Write down the scriptures. Go and read for yourselves. David's punishment and plague. An angel of the Lord brings a plague upon Israel as punishment, but stops at the threshing floor of Arunah. The angel of the Lord appears to David, leading to the building of an altar and the cessation of the plague. The rescue of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. An angel referred to as a son of the gods protects Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Daniel in the lion's den. An angel shuts the mouths of the lions protecting Daniel. Peter's escape from the prison. An angel of the Lord frees Peter from prison, leading him out safely. Angelic support in Revelation. Michael and his angels fight against the dragon, Satan, and his angels, resulting in Satan's defeat and expulsion from heaven. Why did the father not go and fight against Satan, the dragon, and his angels himself? Why did he send Michael and his angels to go get the job done? Because that's the way of the father. He delegates. He doesn't get his hands dirty. He doesn't get bloody. He doesn't go out and kill himself. He gives the order for death to happen, and death happens. He gives the order for life to happen, and life happens. He gives the order for someone to be delivered, for someone to be saved, and it happens. He's responsible even though he doesn't do it himself. So he still gets his glory because anyone with sense gives credit to the, to the one giving the orders. All right. In Revelation 19, 11 through 21, angels are a part of the heavenly armies that accompany Mashiach, uh, uh, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, in his final victory over the forces of evil. All right. It's angels who are part of the heavenly armies that accompany Mashiach. Mashiach, right? In his final victory over the forces of evil. Right? And the 144,000 will be angels at that time. They will be spiritual beings who will be with Christ at that time in his final victory over the forces of evil. We will be made like him in that time. That's what this is all about. This is all about making the sons of God who are in the flesh right now like him in the spirit the same way as Yahweh did. Yahweh came down to be the example for us to show us what the father would do and could do to let us know about the father's plan for us. That's what he came to do. He came as his messenger to inform us of the father's plan. The Father's will. All right. Second Maccabees. Angels appear in the form of horsemen, aiding Judas Maccabeus in battle and assuring his victory. Angels assist the Maccabees in their battle, bringing divine intervention in their struggle for freedom. In the book of Tobit, the angel Raphael drives away the demon Asmodeus, ensuring the safety and happiness of Tobias and Sarah. Right. Are you seeing the theme here? Are you learning more about how the father conducts his business? All right. In the in the in first Kings, chapter 22, verse 18 is where we're going to pick up. Here's a story about the father using angels to work for him. All right. About him delegating. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me? but evil. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. I saw the Lord Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai sitting on his throne, not moving, not going anywhere, not moving about, sitting on his throne. And all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? So the, the father, he wants Ahab to die. Ahab, Ahab, same thing. Don't 
slip up on the pronunciation. He wants them to die. He wants them dead. But he doesn't just snap his fingers or says the word and it just instantly happens. That's what people believe happens. That's what they believe happened at creation because it says that he spoke spoke creation in the being. They think he just spoke it and then it happened. That is not how it occurred. He spoke it. He said what he was going to do. And then Yahweh Shai got it done. All right. The father says what he wants. I want Ahab dead. Who's going to get it done? He's speaking to his host of angels. All right. A picture, a boss sitting in the, in, in the, uh, in a meeting with his staff, having a staff meeting, has an assignment that he won't carried out. And he asks, who's going to get this done for me? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. So the angels are saying, hey, I'll do it. I'll do like this. I'll do it. I'll do it. And there came forth a spirit and stood before Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai said unto him, wherewith or how? How are you going to do it? So he didn't even tell him how he wanted him to go do it. He asked who would do it. And then he asked him, how are you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Wait a minute. So the father can go and allow a, someone to be possessed by a lying spirit to cause them to lie? Yes. Yes. So you mean the father can also put a spirit on you that causes you to be dumb to the scriptures? Yes. He can cause somebody to come and lie to you and say that there is no Christ, that the Old Test the New Testament is fake and then cause you to believe it through crafty counsel? Yes. Because if the Father doesn't want you to believe in the New Testament, he can send a lying spirit to you to convince you that the New Testament is fraudulent so that you don't believe it. He can put a lying spirit in the mouth of someone who teaches you that the old, the New Testament is not legitimate. And he they will teach you in a way that sounds great to you, is believable, so that you believe the lie. Because he doesn't want you to know the truth. This should scare you. He says, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so so he guaranteed him he ensured that he would succeed at it he liked the plan and guaranteed him success he said i like that plan and i'm gonna guarantee that you're successful so the father utilized an angel and not only did he utilize him he commissioned him by asking for a volunteer <laughs> he didn't just send somebody and told him what to do he asked for volunteers and asked the volunteer how they would accomplish the thing that he wanted him to do and then afterwards he said okay i like that now i'm going to ensure your success at it now therefore behold the lord hath put a lion spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets and the lord has spoken evil concerning thee this is the Old Testament only. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. This is the Old Testament, Old Testament only Israelites. Did you not read this story? Did you not read this and hear about how the father, father utilized an angel to go down and accomplish this for him? The father is showing you he's utilizing the scriptures, the Old Testament to show you what he can and will do. So that when Yahweh Shai came, you would believe in him. You wouldn't be disbelieving and unbelieving because you don't believe that it's possible for him to do what he did. That what Yahweh Shai came and did and said and spoke and everything they accomplished, that it was impossible because the father would not dare do that. He spent the entire Old Testament teaching you about him, showing you the things that he would do so that when the New Testament came around, you would believe it. So that you would understand that these, this is the way of the father. This is in line with what he has shown me he would do. This lines up with his character. This lines up with his history, with his track record. So I believe it. 
nope, but not you, because you have a zeal for the most high, but not according to knowledge. So you don't believe the New Testament because you didn't understand the old. That's the scary thing for you. Hopefully you awaken from this study, from this series. Hopefully you're watching all the lessons in this series and that you hear the conclusion of the matter before you part from it, before you, you, you cast it behind your back. All right, like the most I said, because you have hated knowledge, therefore will I reject thee. You rejected knowledge, so I'm going to reject you. If you reject this, you're rejecting knowledge and he's going to reject you according to his promise. That's his word. So what is the lesson learned? That the most high gets things done without ever leaving his throne. He delegates and commands. He has vessels, human vessels and spiritual powers, principalities that were created specifically to accomplish his will. So why is it far-fetched that there is a chief power over all of us and over all of them that was created or put in place before them, before us, and given power to create them and to create us and to destroy them and to destroy us and to lead us into everlasting life or allow us to reject him and to go into everlasting condemnation. If Satan is a spirit that is given power to kill, steal, and destroy, read Job, why is it crazy to say that Yahweh Shai is the chief spirit with power to heal and save or to even destroy also if instructed by our father? Why is that beyond reason? If you were the most high, the almighty father, and we're about to create everything in creation that he created, would you not first create someone or put someone in place to be your right hand and to do all this work for you? Or would you just go to work doing it all yourself while having the power to create people to work for you? What would you do? Hmm? Again, even CEOs of corporations, owners of, of, of businesses are smart enough to hire people, to put people in place, to work for them, to help grow their business and run their business. But you mean the almighty father isn't smart enough, powerful enough, crafty enough to hire people, to employ people, to put people in positions, to do work for him, to fulfill his mission, his will. Are you saying that? That's crazy, if that's what you're saying. So, the prophets, a.k.a. the mouthpieces of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right? The prophets. Look at the list of these prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, all right? And Lamentations was written by Jeremiah. That's who it was attributed to. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, or Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Abraham, Moses, King David. Yes, King David was a prophet. When you read his Psalms, his Psalms are full of prophecies. Many don't understand what's going on in the Psalms. So you hear people say, well, look, this is talking about King David. When you hear Yahweh Shire and his apostles and disciples in the New Testament referring to the Old Testament and quoting the Psalms. And they believe that these things that David was talking about, that he's writing about himself. But he wasn't. They were prophecies. He was writing about the coming king. He was writing about Yahweh Shai and his life. And the things that he would do, say, and fulfill. But because you don't understand prophets and how they wrote the prophecies, because you don't really understand the Old Testament that you cling to so tightly, you don't understand the New Testament, you don't understand the Father, his will, his plan, 
or what he would do what or what he did do and how is it that you read the old testament you read all of these prophecies in the old testament the promises of the father and you say you believe in him well if you believe in him then you got to believe that he cannot and does not lie and since he cannot and does not lie all of his promise promises must be fulfilled and all of his promises were not fulfilled in the old testament and so if all his, if, if all of his promises were not fulfilled in the old testament and the new testament is fraudulent that means his word is void that he lied to us that he did not do the things that he said he would do he did not accomplish what he said he would accomplish he did not keep his word the new testament is his word being kept is his prophecies that he made in the old testament being true being fulfilled if the new testament is not legitimate then the father didn't keep his word that he made to us in the old testament you're calling him a liar That's what you're saying, that he lied. And if you believe that people stop writing stuff down, that our people quit taking records with the book of Malachi, that that was it. Nobody wrote anything down anymore. No one kept any records. There was no more teachings. The history of Israel just stopped. It ceased. You're unbelievably crazy, insane, in fact, absolutely groping around in, in darkness you're blinded and that kind of blinding can only come from on high aaron miriam samuel nathan gad ahijah shemaiah edo Hana, hananai jehu elijah elisha micaiah Oded, Holda, Zechariah. These are prophets, right? All spokesmen for the Father and, Yah and Yahweh Shai, our King. All people, humans, flesh and blood that were commissioned to speak on his behalf, to do things on his behalf, to teach on his behalf, to intercede, to come and speak to the people, to show them the Father and Yahweh Shai, to teach them about things to come. So why could Yahweh Shai not have been a heavenly messenger sent from our Father to come teach us of things to come? To come and die for us because only the blood of the sinless would be sufficient only the blood of of the lamb of god the most perfect sacrifice the father have in his store would be sufficient that he who made us died for us yes yahweh shai he is the one that made us yes it was at the father's command yes it was through the father's power but he's the one that actually did it the father sent the same person that created us to die for us to purchase everlasting life for us and his blood covers us and if you don't believe in him you have no covering for your sins the old testament i'm sorry the old covenant and the things that you have to do under the old covenant it's all done away with it is impossible for anyone right now in this time to make offerings for sin. How can your sins be forgiven you? How can they be covered? How can you be washed clean without the Levitical priesthood, without the, the temple, the sanctuary and so forth? You remain in your sins. It is impossible for anyone under the Old Covenant, under the Old Testament to receive forgiveness of sins. You have nothing in place that you need in place in order to be forgiven. So how does the father come and accept you back into his family? How does he keep his word to you, to Israel, that he will save us and deliver us from sin if 
the Old Testament and the Old Covenant is still in effect. It's the only covenant in effect. It's the covenant that we are under, that we must abide by, but yet we don't have what we need in order to have our sins and transgressions forgiven for us so that we can be saved and delivered. How do you get saved and delivered under the Old Covenant without having what you need under the Old Covenant to accomplish it? How does it happen? How do you do it? You can't. You're waiting to die. If you are not under Yahweh Shai, if you do not believe in him, you are just waiting to die. There is no forgiveness for you. There is no covering of your transgressions and iniquities. There is no salvation for you. There is no everlasting life for you. There is no adoption into the Most High's family for you. You don't get to make it. And you are responsible for covering your own sins. And the only way you can do it is to keep the law of Moses and to do all the acts of sacrifice that they that was necessary under the old covenant. You better find us some Levitical priests. You better set up a, a sanctuary. You better go and get everything that you needed under the old covenant for ritual and ceremonial uh, sacrifices and, and cleansing and so forth. You better go run and set it all up before the world ends. He can't. It's impossible. It'll never happen. He ensured that it was impossible. He moved it out of the way so that we would no longer try to rely on the old covenant for salvation. He wanted us to have to rely on him. So he took out of the way the thing that we relied on to try to find our own righteousness, to try to cleanse ourselves. He didn't want us to try to cleanse ourselves. So he got rid of the very institution that we relied on to try to cleanse ourselves. And because we don't have it, that is supposed to be the truth that we are supposed to try to cleanse ourselves. He doesn't want that to be the way we try to get to him. He provided a new way. You're supposed to know what he wants by what he's done. Old Testament prophecies of the Messiah. King David, through the Psalms, prophesied of him many times over. For the sake of brevity, we'll just get a few. In Psalm chapter 2, verse 7, I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today, I have become your father. This is not the Lord speaking to David. This is not King David speaking about himself. All right. This is like he overheard a conversation between the father and Yahweh Shai, and he's relaying the conversation to us. Psalms 22 and 1 and 16 through 18. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. I'm not reading the King James Version because some people, I have a feeling that the people who really need this lesson are people who need to hear this in more simple English. They need to hear this put more plainly for their understanding because apparently they don't understand the KJV. Okay. So this was not something that happened to King David. He's prophesying of what would happen with Yahweh Shai when he came to the earth. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. This never happened to King David. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. This never happened to King David. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. This never happened to King David. Who did this happen to in the entire Bible? Come on, man. Don't be an idiot. Who did, it, who did this happen to? This was a prophecy of what would happen to someone. And that someone is who is speaking here in the Psalms. Who is this? Psalms 110, one through, in what, verse 1 through 4. The Lord says to my Lord. Now, this is King David speaking. The Lord says to my Lord. Who is the Lord speaking to 
his Lord. This is between the father and his son. All right. So I'm going to translate. The father said to Yahweh Shai, said to Christ, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Again, King David speaking, saying the father says to Yahweh Shai, our Messiah, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Prophecy. Speaking of things to come. This is not something the father said to David. All right. Again, he's like a fly on the wall. Hearing, an, hearing a conversation between the father and the son, Yahweh Shah. And he's relaying what he heard in the conversation. But you don't understand the the Old Testament. You don't understand prophecy. You don't understand the Psalms. You don't understand what King David was saying a lot of times. You don't understand what any of the prophets were saying most of the time. But you love the Old Testament. How ironic. Moses, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 19, listen to what he says. And the Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. The Lord your God will raise up a prophet like me, not just any prophet. He will raise up a prophet like me. Who, whose life resembled the life of Moses? Yahweh Shai. What other prophet came and brought commandments from the father to the people? What other prophet came and established laws, new laws for them to be under? What other prophet came and led them out of captivity and out of bondage into safety? None. If you're looking at the prophets of the Bible, if you're not looking at Yahweh Shah, if you're not looking at Christ, you're never going to find this prophet that he is speaking about. You're never going to be able to identify them if you rule out Christ. And listen to what Moses says. He says, you must listen to him. Why is he saying that? Because he's saying that that day is going to come when you are no longer going to follow the laws that I gave you. You're going to follow the laws that he brings you. You're going to follow his commandments. You're going to discontinue from following the things that I brought you and gave you and you're going to listen to him telling you that the law of Moses is going to be done away with Moses himself is informing you that the laws that he brought and commandments that he gave you are going to be done away with they're going to be overruled when this prophet comes he's going to bring you something that's going to overrule what I said so you must listen to him in that day and stop listening to me that's what he's saying but how did you not Understand that this is what Moses was saying because you were left in gross darkness. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. When was there a virgin birth, a virgin that conceived a son? called Emmanuel. And I know somebody saying, see, they said his name was going to be Emmanuel, not Yahweh Shah, not Jesus, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Those people are without understanding. They don't understand the way names are used in the Old Testament because names are usually just Hebrew words and Hebrew phrases that are made names. Emmanuel is a phrase in Hebrew, that means God with us. It's not a name in the way we know names. It is a name in the sense of it is a phrase. Because the person who that this is referring to would be called God with us. Because it, he would be God in the flesh who would be dwelling among the people. Who else in the entire Bible was considered 
God in the flesh. God dwelling among his people. Christ, Yahweh Shai, was referred to as a God among us, the Israelites, among his people. You say the virgin birth was all made up by Christians and is fake. But here in the Old Testament is a prophecy about the virgin birth, man. This is a foretelling of the coming of Yahweh Shai, of Christ, in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For to us a child is born unto Israel. To us, Israel, a son is given. A child is born, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. Wait a minute. It's not like the father is giving his glory away to this son. To whoever this child is that would be born and the government will be placed on his shoulders. So the father isn't going to take the burden of of the government being on his own shoulders, he's going to place it on the shoulders of this son, this child that will be born, and he will be called, listen closely, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Listen, this is the Old Testament. A child will be born among Israel. A son will be given. A son given? Whose son is given? The son of the father. He is given his son. And his son will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. You hear that? Everlasting Father, sounds like a God to me, Prince of Peace. If this is not Yahweh Shah, if this is not our King, our Messiah, who is it speaking of? And why is the Father allowing his glory or any glory to be given to this child that would be born? To us a son is given. Who else is able to give a son? Who gives life? The father does, right? So the father is given his son and putting the government on his shoulders. And his son would be called wonderful counsel. Listen, remember when it says in, in the previous verse that... uh previous scripture that he will be called Emmanuel. See, when he says he will be named, he will be called. These are synonyms for each other, right? And so titles. He will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, a title. God with us, not an actual name in the way we know names. Wonderful counselor is not a name in the way we know names. Mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace are not names in the way that we know names. They are titles. These would be his titles. Emmanuel would be his title. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 10 is where you will find the following scripture. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. Go and read all of that chapter, specifically verses one through 10, but read all of it. Read all of chapter 11 and get the full understanding of what's going on there. All right, go read Isaiah chapter 53. Here's a snippet. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Wait a minute. The arm of the Lord would be revealed. Why? The, so the Lord is going to reveal his arm. He has a physical arm that gets revealed to people. What kind of sense does that make? None. See, if you're without spiritual discernment, you don't understand spiritual talk. That the arm of the Lord is a person. It's someone. Who is this arm? What is, why is it referred to as an arm? Because you use your arm to get things done, right? When you want to grab something, you use your arm, right? When you need to fight, you will use your arms. Protect yourself, you will use your arms. You want to build, you will use your arms. So it's symbolic of the fact that whoever this is, is someone that works on behalf of the father. Someone that he uses to get things done for him. That's why he's called an arm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Right? 
And it, and it goes on to tell you that he was revealed to those who are weaned from the milk. What is the milk? The Old Testament. The law of Moses was the milk. The Old Testament was the milk. We're supposed to grow up and become meat eaters. Able to consume things that are harder to eat. But Old Testament only Israelites can't consume things that are harder to eat. So they regurgitate the Old Testament because they aren't able to chew it. They aren't able to consume it. They aren't able to swallow it. It's hard for them to swallow because they are babes in their understanding. They are meat milk drinkers and not meat eaters. So they can't believe the message of the prophets who prophesied of the Messiah. The proof in, of the Messiah, the Messiah has not been revealed to them because they are milk eaters. All right. It says he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. What other person throughout the entire Bible was pierced and crushed for the transgressions and iniquities of Israel? What prophet who had to be killed for the sins of the entire people? Who was made a sin offering? For the entire people of Israel. If it wasn't Christ, who was it? Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 through 6. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. That is not King Solomon, that is King Yahushai. Who this was a reference to read the entire chapter for deeper understanding for complete understanding but let's get another witness of this all right so the most highest covenant with david as prophesied by samuel in second samuel chapter 7 starting at verse 8 now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant david thus saith the lord of hosts I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. All right, so the father made King David, a fleshly man, ruler over his people, Israel. Right? He, he was a keeper of the sheep. Symbolic of Yahweh Shai being the keeper of the sheep, who is also made ruler over his people Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Wait a minute. So the father is saying, and he's speaking through Yahweh Shai. This is Yahweh Shai speaking on behalf of the father, right? Through the power of the father. He says, I have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name. He made David a great name, a.k.a. he got David fame, praise, and glory. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. We know this has not been fulfilled yet. This is not because that is not the state of us. We have constantly been moved around. We have not been brought into a place of our own where we have not been moved from there any longer. So we are still waiting for the fulfillment of this. So this could not have happened under King Solomon. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore. We are still being afflicted by the children of wickedness, proving this has not happened yet. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also, the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. 
and I will establish his kingdom. Now, at first glance, it seems as if he's talking about King Solomon because he says, which shall proceed out of thy bowels and I will establish his kingdom. But what you don't get is spiritual talk. You don't understand the power that the Most High has and what he's able to do. He was able to preserve David's seed, to take David's seed and to put it into Mary, thereby making Yahweh Shai the son of David directly. That is why Yahweh Shai is never referred to as the son of Joseph. He is called the son of David because the father in all his great power was able to take the seed of David, hold on to it, preserve it, and place it where he wanted to place it put it inside of the womb he wanted to put it inside of to accomplish his will. The father kept his promise, right? He says, and I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Now, do you believe the father is a keeper of his word or do you believe he, he can lie? If you believe he is a keeper of his word and you also believe that you also believe that King Solomon is who he's speaking about here, then you have a problem. Because although King Solomon committed iniquity, King Solomon was not chastised with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. This did not happen to him. So that would make the father a liar. He did not keep his word. He did not chastise King Solomon with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. He didn't do it. But you know who he did do it to? The other son of David. Yahweh Shai. Who he didn't commit iniquity himself, but he took on the iniquity of his pe of the people, becoming the scapegoat for the people. So the the sins of the people was placed upon him. So it was as if he did commit the iniquity. And so he was chastised with the rod of men. He was, and with the stripes of the children of men, this happened to him. Again, a prophecy of what would happen to Christ, to our Messiah when he came. This did not happen to any other man any other person in the book besides him. And so if he, Yahweh Shai, Christ, is not who this was speaking of, then who? And since you can't answer the then who with anyone outside of Yahweh Shai, that would make the father a liar and not a keeper of his word. And that's what you are saying about him, which puts you in transgression, which puts you in error. Again, which highlights the fact that you have a zeal for the Father, for the Most High, that is not founded on biblical knowledge. All right? He says, but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. So using that son that I chastised with the rod of men, I will establish your kingdom, David, forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever through him. Through this son, I will establish a Davidic kingdom forever. That didn't happen with King Solomon. So this cannot be a reference to King Solomon. It has to be a reference to a future king, a future son of King David. How can there be a future son of King David if King David passed away? And if the Most High is not able to preserve David's seed and place it in a woman in a future time period, When did the father keep his word if the virgin birth story is fraudulent? Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. Again, I'm not reading all of it. 
In my vision that night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. Who is this that he's speaking of? Who was this that was like a son of man who came with clouds of heaven, who approached the Ancient of Days, our father, and was led into the presence of our father, went up to the right hand of the father. Who does this sound like? Where do you hear something throughout the entire book that sounds like this being fulfilled, this prophecy being fulfilled? Where do you hear it happening in the book? If not Yahweh Shai Christ, where and to whom? All right, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. And again, read the entire chapter. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel, and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, which means transgression will be brought to an end eventually. How will transgression be brought to an end? And to make an end of sins. How was there a, an end of sins? And to make reconciliation for iniquity. How was there reconciliation made for iniquity? Old Testament only Israelites, if there is no Christ, no Yahweh Shai, how are you able to make reconciliation for iniquity without Levitical priesthood with no temple? How are you able to do it? All right. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. There's a plan by the father to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy to anoint the most holy what is this a reference to it is a reference to christ the anointed the most holy was him yahweh shai our christ our savior our redeemer our deliverer is the most holy anointed by the father this was all a prophecy of what would happen of him coming in the flesh when he came to make an end of sins, to finish the transgressions of Israel, to make reconciliation for the iniquity of Israel, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. That's what Yahweh Shai did when he came in the flesh. If Yahweh Shai didn't come, if the New Testament is fraudulent, when was this prophecy? When was this promise? When was this guarantee of God fulfilled? How did he do it? When did he do it? If the New Testament is fraudulent and he didn't do it through Christ Yahweh Shai, you're calling the father a liar because it never happened if Yahweh Shai never happened. If the New Testament is Ill, is illegitimate, then the father did not keep his word. Verse 25. Now, uh, know therefore and understand. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, telling you that the Messiah, the Prince, would come shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, meaning killed but not for himself. So he's not going to be killed for, for anything of his own doing. Whoever this Messiah is, is going to be killed, but not because of his own transgressions, not because he deserved it. He did nothing to be killed, but he's going to be killed. And the prince of the people that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Again, prophesying in 70 AD. Right? Because of Israel not believing in the Messiah, not loving him, not honoring him, not obeying him, not clinging unto him is why 70 AD happened unto Israel while the sanctuary was destroyed, while the father brought it down because that was always the purpose to get rid of the Levitical priesthood, was to get rid of the law of Moses and to replace it 
And since we wouldn't accept the replacement, uh, willingly, he forced it upon us via the sword of our enemies, who he caused to take down the sanctuary, remove the Levitical priesthood, and then come and push Christianity on us, that, pre that pushed a Messiah on us. Yes, they lied about what he looked like. They lied about, you know, who he came for. But yeah, but the Messiah did exist. We were forced fed the New Testament at the point of the sword and at the threat of death because we wouldn't accept it the way the Father tried to deliver it to us the first time. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Who shall confirm the covenant? The Messiah that came will confirm the covenant. Wait a minute. But the covenant was given way back from Moses. So what is this covenant he's coming to confirm? Could it be a fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 31 and 31, where he says that he will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like unto the first covenant that he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. All right. Now, this is a spiritual week. One day, meaning a year. So for seven years, he would confirm a covenant for seven years. And in the midst of the week, so at the halfway point of the week, after three and a half days, a.k.a. three and a half years, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Yahweh Shai Christ died three and a half years into his ministry. And when he died, the temple was rent and he brought an end to sacrifice and oblation. Right? And that's why there is still a three and a half year period left for him to confirm the covenant. That's why many understand, rightfully so, that there are still three and a half years to be fulfilled of the confirming of the covenant. And that is going to happen when he brings us into the wilderness. We are waiting for the fulfillment of the, the three and a half years in the wilderness that concludes the confirming of the covenant for the week. All right, Micah 5 and 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. Listen, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Sounds like a God to me. A prophecy of someone who will come out of Judah, who will be made ruler over Israel, whose origins, who be, whose beginnings are from old, from ancient times, who was a God. Wow, this is the Old Testament. What are you reading that's leading you to believe the New Testament is illegitimate, that the New Testament can't be true? What are you reading exactly? Old Testament only Israelites. You're not reading the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. Now watch this. This is a prophecy of the coming king who would come righteous and victorious, but he would come lowly, not in great glory, not in prestige and, and great pomp and circumstances like that. He would come lowly and riding on a donkey. Who fulfilled this if not Christ Yahweh Shai? And also note this, that many Israelites in the day when she came, didn't believe on him 
because he didn't come in the sky. Remember they said, oh, the scripture said that the Messiah would come and he would live forever. He would reign forever. It's like they didn't read the parts, the prophecies that talked, that said that he would come lowly. See, they skipped over that. They read the scriptures, but they didn't read this one. They had these same scriptures available to them. So how did they not read this? Or did they read it and not understand? You see that? The same thing as now. Nothing new under the sun. You have Israelites reading this now, but they don't understand what they're reading. So they suffered the same error as, as the Israelites of that day who didn't believe that he was him because he didn't come in the clouds and doing great signs and miracles and saving them immediately. They thought that he was just going to come and save them, you know, coming out of the sky and saving them with great violence and because that comes at the end. It's like they skipped over all of the scriptures, all of the things that said what, ha what happened before that. And the Israelites do it now, except they don't believe that a Messiah is going to come even at the end to save us. They think the father is going to come himself. <laughs> it's crazy. I know. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced. So whoever this is, this is that speaking is the one that was pierced. That means this is not the father. And they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. Again, whoever is speaking here is the one that was pierced. Showing you that what you didn't understand is that when you see this person who was referred to as the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, speaking in the Old Testament, it is Christ. It is Yahweh Shai speaking. He is speaking through the power of the Father, through the will of the Father, and on behalf of the Father, but it is indeed him doing the speaking. He's communicating to the prophets, but you didn't see it. Malachi 3 and 1. I will send a messenger who will prepare the way before me. Again, this is Yahweh Shai speaking, not the Father. Then suddenly, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come. There is a messenger to come. This is already after the old covenant is instituted. So there is a messenger of the covenant. What covenant? Jeremiah 31 and 31. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. There is a messenger who will come of the new covenant who many desire to come. He says, I will send my messenger before me. Who was that messenger? John the Baptist was the messenger who was sent to prepare the way before Christ. Keeping his word, fulfilling this prophecy. If the, old, if the New Testament is not real, if it's fake, phony, and illegitimate, that means this prophecy failed. The Most High didn't keep his word. He didn't do the thing that he said he would do. If what you believe is true, Old Testament only Israelites. So let's address verse six of Malachi chapter three. For I am the Lord. I change not. And then Israel stops there. See, they say, see, he changes not. So the Old the old covenant is in, in effect for eternity. The law of Moses is in effect for eternity. And they stop reading. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, meaning utterly destroyed. I don't change concerning the fact that I have chosen Israel to be my people. I've chosen Israel for my glory. I chose Israel to be my people in whom I will place my spirit. I chose Israel to be the people that I would dwell among. I don't change. I'm not changing my mind about that. That's why you sons of Jacob are not utterly destroyed because I'm going to keep my word. Not that I don't change. I don't do things differently. That doesn't make sense. Adam was given eternal life. Then it was taken from him. That would be changing. Israel lifted up. Israel taken down. 
Israel lifted up, Israel taken down. This nation lifted up, this, this nation taken down. That's changing. Israel put into captivity, Israel taken out of captivity. That's changing. Right? I'm going to put you under the law of Moses. I'm going to take you out from the law of Moses. I'm going to put you into this land. I'm going to take you out of this land. I'm going to give you this land forever. Oh, but now we're out of the land and a different people has this land. Wait a minute. See, the most high would be schizophrenic if what you believe is true. But what you believe has to be wrong in order for the most high, in order for the most high to be true and not a liar. All right. So we're going to stop there and we're going to begin the next video on this highly controversial and spoken of scripture that says, my glory will I not give to another. This is one of the main tenets of the belief system of the Old Testament only non-believing Israelite. And we are going to address it in the next video. I hope that for now you are still rocking with me and you are learning and being edified, that you are being increased in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Pray for discernment if you need it. Pray for wisdom because it doesn't come on your own. You have to ask for it. It is the gift of the highest. All right. And I pray that you receive it. My prayer for Israel is that we may all be saved. I know that's not going to be happening. It's not going to happen. We're not going to all be delivered. Many are going to enter into the wilderness and have to be purged out for rebellion. Right. But for those who are listening and learning with the right spirit, you have a desire to know the most high God according to wisdom keep with me all right hear the conclusion of the matter if you know somebody who can benefit from this all right be a blessing to others don't hoard it don't hide it divide it right pass it on each one reach one right all praise honor and glory to the highest i'll be yahweh by shemi i was shy see you guys on the next one lord willing shalom